Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner. I've got three really great meals planned for this week and I can't wait to share them with you. I hope you've had a great week. This week is really special because I am working with ButcherBox again. I've worked with them before and we have had three of our very own ButcherBox so far and we love them. We can't get enough of them, so let me tell you a little bit about them. ButcherBox ships high quality meat straight to your door. I love that not only can you choose your delivery frequency, but you can choose what box you get. So they have four curated boxes and then they also have a popular custom box so you get exactly what your family loves. I mentioned before that their meat is super high quality. Their beef is 100% grass fed and pasture raised. Their chicken is free range USDA certified organic chicken. They have heritage breed pork, wild caught seafood, and then their bacon is sourced from heritage breed pigs. It's uncured, nitrate free, and sugar free. And all of these meats are sourced from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards for quality. Here I'm just showing you me opening my box. This time I chose the beef and pork box and I was so excited about all of the different cuts of meat that we got. Butcher Box ships your order frozen at peak freshness and it's packed in an eco-friendly 100% recyclable box. Butcher Box believes in better. You can trust that the high quality meat you put on your table each day is better for you and your family, the farmers, the animals welfare, the businesses involved, and our planet. This is the third box that we've gotten and I have to say we've really fallen in love with it. We love opening it up and looking at each different cut of meat and figuring out what recipes we're going to use, how we're going to incorporate it into our family's meals. And as you saw right there, Stephen gets really excited when there's certain things in there like that was spare ribs and he got really excited about this huge pork roast. Be sure to check out the link in my description box so you can go learn more about ButcherBox and check out their different box options. New members are gonna get two New York strip steaks and a pack of bacon free in their first box and shipping is always free. So go check them out, I know you're gonna love them. Now let's get started on our first meal. So for our first meal of the week, I am using their 100% grass-fed and grass-finished ground beef and we are making taco stuffed green bell peppers. I'm really excited about this one. This recipe alone is keto friendly. However, we're doing a side dish of our favorite Mexican rice. I just made it last week. If you want that recipe, I will link it below, but let's get started. This recipe is super, super simple, very minimal chopping, and I am going to be using my dicer for this one. So I've got one onion that I'm going to dice up. We only need three of these bell peppers for us, but I have four, so I'm gonna dice up one of the bell peppers to go in with the taco meat as well. So for these other ones that we're going to stuff with the taco meat, I'm just going to cut them in half. And then come in. Look at that. This one has all kinds of little, do you see that? Yeah. Look at it. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got distracted. So I'm just making it to where we can actually stuff this. Let me grab a paring knife. Make it a little bit easier to work with here. Now that I've cut up my bell peppers, I'm gonna put them in this microwave safe casserole dish. I have about a fourth a cup of water in the bottom here. So we're gonna soften these in the microwave. I'm gonna cover them with a paper towel. We're gonna put them in there for seven to 10 minutes. I'm gonna check them after about five or six minutes just to make sure they're okay. But we just want to soften them just enough so that we will put the taco filling in there. We can put it all in the oven and it won't take long at all. Okay, I'm gonna cook up this pound of ground beef, but I'm also gonna to add to it our onions and bell pepper. I'm gonna save the rest of this for this week. Maybe we can make some omelets, babe. Does that sound good? Yeah, that 
Sounds good. All right, let's put it in a little baggie. It's been about six minutes. These are pretty good and soft, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them out. Now that this is brown, we're gonna add in our taco seasoning. I make my own taco seasoning. I will try and remember to put that recipe below. Let's add in a little bit of water. I love these precise measurements you're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have everything linked below if you are a measurer like I used to be. Steven used to make fun of me. He'd be like, no, nah, I can just eyeball it. And I'll be like, no, and throw a teaspoon at him. <laughs> you remember those days? Yeah. Okay, now here comes the fun part. The recipe called for a cup of sour cream, but it also called for a pound and a half of meat, and we're just using one pound, so I'm not gonna do quite the exact measurements on the recipe. So this is almost a cup of sour cream, almost a half a cup of salsa. I'm using medium salsa. You can use mild or spice it up even more and use hot. And it calls for a cup of cheese. This is most likely a cup and a half of cheese, but you know how we do. This is Colby Jack. I think the recipe calls for cheddar. Let's mix all of that together. Okay, so what we're gonna do is transfer these over here to a, a little bit larger baking dish just so it's a little bit easier to work with. I'm gonna spray some vegetable oil down here. Okay, now we're just gonna stuff our peppers with all of this yummy taco meat. I forgot to reserve some of this for the top, so we had to shred a little bit more. Such a shame that we have to add more cheese. I know, right? So yeah, let's pile this on. Okay, so I've got the oven preheated to 350. I'm gonna put these in for 20 to 30 minutes. This looks tremendous. Yeah. Oh. Just cut down in there. All that just sort of started oozing out. <laughs> That's so good. Wow. The pepper is perfectly cooked. Love how, uh, how soft it is. Just a little bit of texture to it. That's what I love about it. And then there's just so much flavor packed into all this stuff. I'm always a big fan of your taco seasoning with the ground beef. Yeah. But then you added that um, cheese and salsa, salsa, sour cream, yes, yeah. It's just loaded with flavor. Oh man, yeah. Now I'm really getting that sour cream and salsa flavor. Man, that's good. Oh wow. And while he takes another bite of that, I made some more of that Fiesta lime sauce off camera. If you were wondering what I'm talking about, it was on last week's What's For Dinner. I will link it below. But we're kind of obsessed with that sauce. Oh man. 
So that's what we put over the rice. You have got to make this meal. There is so much flavor here. It is incredible. Okay, so th is this one of your favorites? Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. That's, that's big stuff, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna dig in. This is restaurant quality. I think it's better than a restaurant. This is phenomenal. We are loving it. Are you loving it? Don't let her fool you, she's already had cheese. Lou, are you lying? Telling everybody you're hungry? Okay, it's our second meal of the week. We just got home from church, so we're gonna be having this for Sunday lunch. But this would be great for a dinner, for breakfast for dinner. If y'all are like us, we love doing breakfast for dinner. I've never tried this casserole. I'm really excited about it. I'm calling it biscuits and gravy casserole, but the technical name, the technical name is right here, and it's biscuits and gravy with sausage and egg breakfast casserole. Biscuits and gravy casserole, let's go. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is heat up this skillet. We're just gonna brown up our sausage and I'm gonna preheat our oven to 350. I've just got a pound of sausage in here. While I'm waiting on our sausage to brown, I'm gonna go ahead and shred some cheese. I've got about half a eight ounce block here. We just need a cup of cheese for this. So I'm gonna shred it up really quickly. Gracie Lou, my cat, now knows the sound of this. I don't even have to get cheese out yet. She just knows the sound of me putting this contraption together and she comes running. Okay, our sausage is still going over there on the stove, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. Did that just happen? That just scared me to death. <laughs> so, I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> okay, well that was a lot easier than usual to open up, but I've got this eight count of buttermilk biscuits. I'm gonna cut these into one inch pieces and they're, they're gonna line the bottom of this eight, nine by 13 pan. I do need to go ahead and spray my pan with some vegetable oil. Okay, our sausage is almost done. While it is finishing up, I'm gonna get started on our gravy. Now you could definitely just make your own gravy and I was going to do that, but I have never tried this Pioneer peppered gravy mix. And that's actually what the recipe called for. So I'm gonna give this a shot. So now what I need to do is bring a cup and a half of water to a rolling bowl. So let's turn the right eye on. And while that comes up to a bowl, it says I just need to Mix this gravy mix with a half a cup of water. Totally thought I was filming, I was not. All I did was add a half a cup of cool water here and empty in this gravy packet. And all I have to do is just make sure that all the lumps are gone. Okay, so this is done. Let's take the sausage off the stove. I got it a little browner than I probably should have, but that'll be okay. Okay, I'm gonna bring this over here just so it's easier to work with and turn this back up to high, there we go. And all we've got to do is just add this gravy mix in until it thickens and we're done. All right, it's done. Let's take it off the heat. Okay, just one more step until we're ready to assemble the entire thing. I just need to whisk six eggs and a half a cup of milk together. Maybe I should have got an bear bowl. What you think? Okay, let's assemble our casserole. We've got our Biscuit dough on the bottom, we're gonna add our sausage on top. Now let's add a layer of our cheese. Now we'll pour over our eggs. And finally, our gravy. Okay, that's it. This is gonna go in a 350 degree oven for 35 to 45 minutes.
breakfast for lunch. Mm hmm. Hot. Cole says it's hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mmm. Yes, that is really good. Is this like a biscuit? It's got biscuits on the, so he wasn't here when I started cooking. He had um, children's mm. church to help with. So Cole and I came home and I started cooking, had this ready for when he came home. Mm. Um, so it was, it is biscuits on the bottom. It's got sausage, gravy, eggs, milk, cheese. It's like, it screams comfort breakfast food. <laughs> love the flavor, it's really, really, really good. I love the biscuits in here. It's really good. The biscuits has the crust, I guess you could say. Yeah. Wow, that's really, really, really good. It's like a, it's like a, a take on biscuits and gravy, I guess? It is, it's called biscuits and gravy casserole. It's just too good, I didn't put my thumbs up. I, I just have to eat this. He did. I kept looking at him like, do you like it? And he just kept nodding and he didn't want to talk. <laughs> it is. I'm, I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. It smells heavenly and it looks so pretty. Okay, let me, let me dig in. Okay, this is my new favorite breakfast casserole. So I've made a breakfast casserole on my channel before. If you haven't seen it, I will link it. It is really good, but this is my new favorite. It incorporates everything I love about breakfast all in one dish. It's amazing. You need, need, need to make this. Okay, y'all, it is our third meal of the week, and you know what that means. It is subby supper night. Tonight's subby supper comes from Laura. Laura lives in Pennsylvania. Fun fact, Laura just got married on Valentine's Day, so congratulations to Laura and her new husband. She has two teenage boys, and she said during the season of her life where she was crazy busy single mom, she found, she created this recipe because she just didn't have a lot of time and she was just finding things in her pantry and it ended up being delicious and now it's one of their favorites. It is called Lara's Crazy Crock-Pot Chicken. I'm very appreciative of this recipe just because I'm not feeling my greatest today. I definitely do not feel like cooking at all, not at all but this is one where I can just kind of throw everything in the crock pot. It'll be ready in just a few hours because it's just chicken, so it doesn't take long. I'm gonna cook it on high. And then you can either serve it over rice or you can serve it over riced cauliflower, which is what we're gonna do. And then this evening, if I feel up to it, I'm going to make the my new favorite um, recipe for biscuits. It's two ingredients. I found it from another YouTuber. I'll share that a little bit later. But right now, let's put everything in the crock pot. This is gonna take like two minutes. Here's everything we need. She used four chicken breasts. I just used three. I've got two cans of cream of mushroom soup, one can of French onion. I've got some seasonings for the chicken. And then I did defrost some frozen chopped spinach. You could use fresh as well if you wanted to. And that's it. So let's season the chicken and get it all in the crock pot. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of garlic powder. A little bit of anti no nos And she even mentioned this in her recipe. So I'm glad to see others using this really great seasoning blend. I love it. And some salt and pepper. I'm just gonna kind of press that in. Okay, I'm going to spray my crock pot. Put my chicken on the bottom. And these are really thin chicken breasts, so I'm gonna cook these on high and it'll only probably need to cook for two and a half to three hours. I'll check on them just so that they don't dry out. Let's just mix together our soups in the spinach. So that's two cans of the cream of mushroom and now we're gonna do a can of French onion. And I'm just gonna add in some spinach that I did defrost. Actually, I'm gonna squeeze out some of the water. Okay, now I'm just gonna pour this over top of it. And we're gonna let this cook on high for, I'll check it after about two hours or so just to kind of see where we're at. And if you wanted to cook it on low, just depending on the thickness of your chicken, you would do it for four to six hours. Okay, it is a couple of hours later. I just checked the chicken. 
checked the chicken and it is done so I turned it over to warm and I'm going to go ahead and make our two ingredient biscuits I'm just going to be using self-rising flour and heavy cream and I found this recipe from Leslie over at the farming pastor's wife I will link her video below and her channel below someone's done with work <laughs> I'm gonna make biscuits smells good in it here. does smell good in here <laughs> all right so I'm gonna get started on this this won't take long at all um, I've got the oven preheating to 450. Let me show you the measurements that we need and we'll make some biscuits. Okay, so I need two cups of self-rising flour and you don't have to be like super precise with this. That's pretty good. And now I need one and a half cups of heavy cream. I've got just a little bit left in this container. Like really little bit. <laughs> So I made these once before. You're getting Gracie. <laughs> I made these once before and they are very sticky. So you do have to put a good bit of flour down on the um, counter and then you need to flour your rolling pin, flour your hands, flour everything because they are pretty sticky. Oh, and I feel all fancy. Guess what I got the other day? I showed you. Do you remember what I got for biscuits? Oh yeah. An actual cutter. Nice. I'm so fancy. I've always just used a cup before. Probably got enough to do one more. There's always an ugly one in the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be it. It's the ugly duckling. Okay, these are gonna go in a 450 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes. You gotta tell me what this is. this spinach? Yes. Spinach, mushrooms. Cream of mushroom. Cream of mushroom. Um, and French onion soup. Wow. You got some mega flavors going mm -hmm. on in here. So we're gonna have some rice cauliflower to hold all this together. Yep. Oh, I don't know if y'all are hearing that. It's thundering mm. outside. Wow. There is a lot going on in this. First of all, you get the spinach immediately. Okay. Um, love that. Love the spinach flavor. And then you get just hints of everything else. So you get the, the spinach with the hint of the onion um, and then the mushroom. I okay. mean, it's all there. You can taste all the flavors. Mm -hmm. And then take a bit uh, a biscuit of the bite. I love taking biscuits of my bites. I know. They are stupendous. <laughs> he got the ugly biscuit. Mmm. Good. This is a this is a perfect meal for a cold rainy night. Definitely comfort food. Yeah. Um, but I will say this is very rich in flavor. Um, it is it's really 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 good well thank you Laura for creating this mm -hmm. I think she calls it her crazy crock pot chicken so I'm I'm stoked to give it a try 
and the boys are chowing down. So I agree with the guys, two thumbs up on this. I love that this was so simple to cook and I'm loving the biscuits with it. This is the perfect meal for tonight. Y'all need to give this one a try. Don't forget to go down in the description box and click the link. New Butcher Box members are going to get two New York strip steaks and a pack of bacon free in their first box. Thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this week's What's for Dinner. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up before you leave. And if you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family so you will come back each week and get lots of new inspiration. It's like Tetris. This is like Tetris. I'm getting everything ready for the Mexican rice. I hate that you aren't on camera for all of this. They need to see you behind the camera, what you're doing. The faces that you make, yes they do. Because I look crazy reacting to nothing, but what I see, no one else sees. Like that, right there. Wish you could see it. You wanna know what he's doing? He's going. <laughs> we have a lot of meat left over. I'm gonna just like. Pile it up. Pile it on there. Pile it up. Pile it up. Excuse me. <laughs> Need to clean that. <laughs> I had to fix my glass. Okay, you ready? Okay. So